Are you okay to be representing a country that has so much discrimination against black people in its own borders? And uh, we saw the Black Lives Matter movement uh, over the past few years. An Iranian reporter confronted US soccer player Tyler Adams during a press conference. And uh, this is part of the ever growing tensions between the United States and Iran. It's really come to a head at the World Cup in Doha. And so let's see how Adams responded to the provocative question. You're pronouncing our country's name wrong. Our country is named Iran, not Iran. Please, once and for all, let's get this clear. Second of all, um, are you okay to be representing a country that has so much discrimination against black people in its own borders? And uh, we saw the Black Lives Matter movement uh, over the past few years. Are you okay to be representing the US? Meanwhile, there's so much discrimination happening against black people in America. My apologies on uh, the mispronunciation of your country. Um, yeah, that being said, you know, there's discrimination uh, everywhere you go. Um, you know, one thing that I've learned, especially from living abroad in the past years and uh, having to fit in in different cultures and, and kind of assimilate into different cultures, um, is that in the US, we're, we're continuing to make progress uh, every single day. You know, growing up for me, I was, I, I grew up in a, in a white family with an obviously an African American heritage and background as well. So, um, I had a little bit of, uh, different cultures and I, I was very, very easily able to assimilate in different, different cultures. So, um, you know, not everyone has that, that ease and, uh, the ability to do that. And obviously it takes longer to understand. And through education, I think it's, it's super important. Like you just educated me now on the pronunciation of, of your country. So, um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a process. I think as, as long as you see progress, uh, that's the most important thing. Now, uh, I'll just say one thing before I go to you, Jenk. I just really appreciated how, how he handled that because it's easy to have a knee jerk reaction, especially when someone's like, that's not how you pronounce our country's name, right? Like it's, it's easy to kind of get defensive and he didn't do anything. Any of that, he immediately apologized for you know the mispronunciation of Iran, um, and then he went on to explain you know how he deals with uh, the discriminatory practices here in the United States, and he mentions that there's been some progress. I think the progress element of it could be debated, but nonetheless, I think in the context of this press conference, he handled that as well as anyone possibly could. Yeah, loved it. Okay, yeah. so. Uh, the part of the reason I loved it is because a lot of the questions posed to athletes on all teams, not just the American team, is a lot of like, ha ha. <laughs> and what do you, how do you answer for your country doing this? <laughs> okay. And so the reality is, it's possible that people within the country don't agree with what the government uh, is doing at all. And so you're asking a, a biracial player there, hey, what do you think about the oppression of blacks in America? We said, well, not a big fan, okay, <laughs> unsurprisingly. But he gives a nuanced answer about, hey, here's how we're trying to get better. Here's why it's a, a, a problem, honestly, everywhere, right? And that we should all go towards uh, solutions towards it. Oh man, it's, it's refreshing to see an athlete uh, that is so young mm -hmm. be so composed and mature and intellectual and give a great answer. And I, I agree with you, what you said 100% Anna about him not being defensive either. Yeah. And so it's, hey, listen, I'm not trying to come at you with, by pronouncing it wrong. I just didn't know. And thanks for correcting me. Yes. It's like you never hear that. Everybody's always so defensive or offensive. Right. I mean, you could tell that he's yeah. just so emotionally, mentally mature because of how he didn't get uh, defensive. And like, he not only apologized, but thanked him for. Thank you for educating me on the correct pronunciation. It takes a big person to do that, to say that, um, and I loved seeing it. The other thing that I'll just mention quickly is, look, we definitely, definitely have issues here in the United States. Uh, we are seeing the brutality that protesters in Iran are being met with. But it wasn't too long ago when there was unrest uh, in our country in the summer of 2020. And we saw protesters get shoved into unmarked vans. You know, by the authorities, and not knowing where they were going, where they were they were being taken to. At the same time, to that Iranian reporter, listen, bro. Like a 22-year-old woman was very likely 
beaten to death after she was detained for allegedly wearing her headdress incorrectly. So like, let's have a moment of self reflection on both sides, okay? Yeah. Like this, this need to defend your country in any and all ways is unnecessary. You can have a nuanced view, you could love your country while simultaneously acknowledging where there are huge flaws that need to be addressed. So Ricky Strom on TYT Sports makes a really good point. I mean, that's why he's the captain of the team. You pick the captain based on some level of maturity and the ability to bring people together. Check out Ricky on TYT Sports when you get a chance. And one other thing, look, some of these countries that have authoritarian governments have some of the bravest reporters in the world, right? So I can't believe anybody does independent journalism out of Russia. It's just so brave, I can't even imagine it. Totally right? agree. And if you're doing independent reporting out of Iran against the wishes of the government, incredibly brave. But understand that sometimes the ones that get sent to cover things are ones with official backing. And if the government is sending, allowing a reporter to be sent in a completely authoritarian situation, it, that's why you might be seeing what sounds like a non traditional reporter instead of asking a question in a way that uh, is in some ways neutral or objective, he comes in red hot with, you are pronouncing the name of our country wrong, right? <laughs> well, and, and I mean, he did come in hot, but not with tone. He had like yeah. a lovely English sounding accent and everything. It yeah. sounded very calm while he was asking, but let's not kid ourselves. Like the, the line of questioning was meant to be provocative. Yeah, and sometimes it's the government, you know, basically press that's friendly to the government trying to needle Americans and try to start a fight, mm -hmm. right? And that's why he might come in like that. And don't get fooled by the accent that you grow up anywhere and still be government lackeys. We have uh, most of our reporters speak perfectly good English and they're total lackeys, okay, for our government uh, in, in different ways, mainly our corporations. So, uh, and, then, uh, and then finally, look, it could just be national pride. Right, so I could see a Turkish reporter being saying like, "It's not Turkey, it is Turkey," oh my and everybody God. else being like, "Dude, chill, chill." Right? <laughs> but anyway, bottom line <laughs> is, wonderful answer by the American captain, and and I bet you that the players on Iran and the players on America probably agree with each other a thousand times more than the American government and the Iranian government. If, and if they were in charge, we'd probably have much better countries in both places. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.